Okay guys, so this is probably the nicest day that I'm gonna have in probably a couple of weeks. So I figured it'd be the best time to finally take out the new Corrado 300K and mount it on my dedicated swim bait rod and cast it around and just get a feel for it. Now the original plan was to just dive straight into it and go to the spot where I was gonna go swim bait fishing, but Unfortunately, since I've moved, that spot is about an hour and a half away from me. So it's going to take like a whole day of planning to actually be able to do that. But I was very eager to try out this Corrado 300. And I know a lot of you guys probably were eager to watch it in action as well. So I'm just going to do some test casting, get a feel for what it feels like throwing smaller swim baits. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine which gear ratio I like better the high gear or the regular gear and then I'm going to keep that one and that's because thanks to a lot of you guys the video the unboxing video for this reel got over a thousand likes and just as I promised I'm going to give one away and the one that I do not want I'm going to give away to one of you lucky subscribers so just to reiterate this is the 4.7 to 1 gear ratio while there's the 6.6 .6 to one. And if any of you swim eight guys are watching, um, the place I'm gonna be fishing mostly is gonna be heavy and fast flowing current. And I will be trying to reel the swim baits against current. So advise me on which ratio would be the best for that, the slower one or the higher one. All right guys, so here's the 300 HG mounted on my Dedicated swim bait rod, which is the iRod Genesis 2 Junior Swim. And this is a 7 foot 8 medium heavy, it says. I guess that's what MH stands for, but the lure rating is 1 ounce to 4 ounces, while the line rating is 12 to 20 pounds. And once again, it's 7 foot 8. And I'll have to say, for a swim bait rod, even though this is a junior swim bait rod, the blank is actually pretty thin. I have some medium heavies that have a thicker blank than this, but it's got good ratings, so I'm gonna trust that this rod can handle some smaller swim baits. And I have to say, holding this combo in hand, while it's definitely not the lightest thing, it's pretty balanced. I would say the balance point somewhere around there and it is not unwieldy at all. Now, of course, I don't have a swim bait tied on and there's no line, but right now, it feels pretty good. Now, here's the line I'm gonna be using. It's Yozuri Hybrid 20 pound. So at the very top of the line rating for this rod, and the diameter is 0 0.017 inch. So I'm all spooled up and I don't know if you guys can see, but the line lay was not very even because I couldn't really fasten the spool and it was moving around. But hopefully that'll clear itself out when I'm casting. But let me show you the lures I'm going to throw. And they're going to be small swim baits. Now I know the swim bait game has moved along. I think there are swim baits out there that weigh well over a pound and like two feet long. But I'm starting out with lures like this. The Live Target uh, Gizzard Shad. I believe this weighs, says two ounces. So that should be well in the lure range of this rod. I got some Glide Baits as well. I got a Savage Gear. I think this is probably an ounce or so. I got a small River to Sea Glide Bait, which I believe is not even an ounce. I got another Savage Gear Glide Bait. I got the Boy Ducket Imitation Bull Shads. I believe this one, the smaller one, weighs, it doesn't really say, but uh, yeah, I think this is the five inch. And the biggest lure I'm gonna throw is gonna be this one right here. I think this is the six inch. And I think it weighs something like almost three ounces. I'll look it up and put it on the screen for you guys. But uh, yeah, this is the biggest lure I'm going to be throwing. 
And let's start off with something small. Let's start off with a glide bait. All right, guys, so the first lure I have is the Savage Gear Shine Glider 135. And this weighs about one ounce on the scale. All right, so the way I'm gonna set the crotto up is I'm gonna set it to have the side to side plate just eliminated. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want these lures to have the, uh, I guess the most natural fall. And internally the brakes are set to three, but I'm gonna set one more brake on to four because this line is super coily. It is super, super coily. So I'm gonna turn on one extra brake and no, I'm not gonna do it asymmetrically. So if you got OCD about that, too bad. All right, so in hand, this combo with the lure and the line, it does feel pretty heavy, but not unwieldy. And let's see what happens with this Corrado 300K. All right, spool control was very good with four brakes on. The rod can handle it very easily. I can feel this lure. Feels like it's just thumping through the water. Oh yeah, that looks so good. Oh man, I wish you guys could see this glide bait in the water. It's probably got like almost a foot per second sink rate. <coughs> okay, a couple of more tentative casts and then we're gonna see how far I can bomb this lure. All right, I saw some, a uh, couple of little coils popping up there. Now I don't expect to catch any fish. I'm just testing this combo out. But if I do catch something, that would be awesome. Wow. Just looking at these glide baits move underwater, it's pretty hypnotizing. All right, let's do one more cast. Whoa. So yeah, with this spool tension and four brakes on, I'm definitely seeing some overrun there because this line is so stiff and coily. Even with the resistance of the glide bait, it can't straighten out all the coils on this line. So going down to a lighter line might be necessary. Any of you swim bait guys, if you're watching, uh, leave a comment about that. It's 20 pound line too much. But man, this lure, I don't even know if they make this lure anymore because I got this several years ago, but it looks like magic under the water. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn one more brake on so I can really put some uh, effort into these casts. So it's gonna be a total of five brakes. One, two, three, four, five. Five brakes on, one brake off. Now, if you set the spool tension tighter, then you can probably get away with less brake. But like I said, I want the lure to fall naturally. And let's heave one out there. Okay, I slipped on the rocks, but I was able to make a successful cast and it didn't go out there that far. Probably like 30 yards tops. So I may go down to four breaks again and just thumb the spool a little. Man, that glide bait looks so good. My accuracy is off, but just steady retrieving this lure in. 
is pretty effortless. And the rod handles it no problem. All right, so that was probably my best cast yet. Probably went about a little bit over 30 yards. So just as I suspected, I mean, with big swim baits, I know they're heavy, but they probably helicopter through the air and they don't go that far. All right, let's do one more cast and I'll show you guys how much line is left on the spool. So I have a ton of line left on the spool after that cast. Oh crap, I didn't have my drag tightened down. But yeah, you can definitely feel the thump of this glide bait going back and forth in the water. Okay, let me turn the brakes down one. So here's something interesting. So trying to turn off one brake, but these brakes are shaped to where it's very hard to deactivate it. It's hard to show you guys with this GoPro, but there's like these little extensions on the brake shoe that catch these other extensions on the brake hub that turn off and on and it's only one-sided. I don't know if that's on accident or by design, but that makes it really difficult to deactivate a brake shoe. Okay, just doing it from the top actually works. So that's different from previous designs that Shimano's had. All right, so brakes on four. See if we can get more distance. I'm gonna have to thumb the spool if it starts to act up. So I did have to thumb the spool. Distance really didn't go up that much. So yeah, there's definitely a limit to how far you can cast a swim bait. That's very flat and definitely catches the air. All right, one more cast. So that was a more line drive cast and distance was about the same. Man, I can't get over just how good this lure looks in the water. All right, one, one more cast. All right, spool was controlled, but yeah, distance, it's roughly the same. I'm thinking I'm probably getting maybe like a hundred foot tops at least with this bait. All right, so one ounce bait can easily be handled by this combo. No surprise there. So let's tie on a bigger bait. Okay, so next up is the Live Target Gizzard Shad. And this is a very interesting soft swim bait. I've never seen a tail shaped like this. Now this is supposed to be two ounces, but on the scale, it's closer to one and three quarters of an ounce. And you can definitely feel this lure on the end of this rod versus that Savage Gear glide bait. It's already feeling like the rod is starting to get overpowered here. And this is a, looks like a lure that's a straight retrieve and it takes some speed to get that boot tail kicking. Yeah, it's a very subtle kick on this tail. So I might have to keep the HG gear if I want to burn this lure through the water to get that tail kicking. 
Okay, so we're keeping the brakes on four. Oh, wow. You definitely have to keep your thumb pressed on that line a lot firmer on the backswing because once that bait gets back and that momentum starts, I almost lost grip of the line. I would have had a bad backlash. Okay, so just a steady retrieve on this lure. I can definitely feel the boot tail kicking and I can definitely feel the resistance there. Okay, thumb came off the line prematurely there. But distance was probably over 30 yards, just lobbing it out there. I don't think you can put a full Happy Gilmore swing into any of these swim baits that are over one and a half ounces. At least I can't right now, not with this rod. Hopefully you guys can see the bend on the rod caused by this lure. Now right there, I had my thumb pressed super hard on the spool so it wouldn't slip and it affected the accuracy. And that's something that you'll have to, I guess, practice as far as accuracy goes with swim baits. It's training your thumb to release at the right time after pressing on the spool so hard. There we go. So that went out there probably 35 yards. So with this six, six to one gear ratio, I can definitely feel the resistance on this bait. And like I said, the place that I plan on fishing is beneath this dam. And when the current is running, so I'm definitely going to be going against current a lot of time. So I'm, I wonder if the lower gear ratio is going to work better. All right, so the Corrado, the best thing I can say about the size of this Corrado is that I'm not thinking about it as I'm reeling this lure in. As you can see what it looks like in my hand it's not uncomfortable of course it is bigger than most of the reels i have but it doesn't make you think about the size of it and that's a good thing all right one more cast all right so far this eye rod is holding up I don't think this thing can handle four ounces though. Maybe you can lob it out there or pitch out a, a big four ounce swim bait, but I don't know if it can handle casting a four ounce swim bait because it's feeling overpowered with this not even two ounce swim bait. All right, one more cast. Let's go out this way. Oh. Yep, didn't have my thumb trained properly on that cast so it went way off to the left and what I mean when you're doing your back swing and your front swing the bait is so heavy that it is actually moving the line from under your thumb so you have to really press on it really really hard to prevent the spool from blowing up all right one more cast so you have to adjust your release point in order to get an accurate cast. All right, let's go on to an even bigger bait. All right guys, so the last and biggest bait that I plan to throw is this imitation bull shad. It's that Boy Duckett brand. And on the scale, it weighs about two and a quarter ounces. So not super heavy, but about almost half an ounce 
heavier than that live target shad. And check out the bend on the rod. Now the rod feels overpowered to me. Now remember, I'm a noob at swim baits. Right now, this is the first time I've ever thrown big swim baits on a dedicated swim bait setup. So this might be a natural feeling for swim bait guys to have their rods feel like they're overpowered by these lures. But, you know, in my mind, I don't want to swing too hard for fear of snapping this rod. But uh, let's see what this combo can do with this shad swim bait. Oh. All right, so you really, really need a strong thumb to keep that spool from moving during the cast. Now this lure here, it's not a glide bait. It's, it has more of that S swimming action to it. Hopefully you guys can see that. But this is about the size of a lot of shad we have around here. The shad where I live get really, really big. And the fish that eat them are really, really big. Okay, let's do a couple more casts. And man, if someone was throwing a combo like this all day long, they would be sore the next day. So it's got no problem reeling or burning this lure in. And once again, this is still water. I'm gonna probably be reeling against a fast current. So I have to release pretty early to get this lure to fly where I want it to go. It's kind of like bait finesse with a super light lure. You gotta adjust your release point. Man, that is a pretty lure underwater. All right, a couple more casts. So the Corrado is, is super smooth, very rigid retrieve, meaning you can feel the power of this thing when you turn the handle. and it's precision of it. It doesn't have micro gears, you know, like the JDM version of this reel, but it really doesn't need a micro gear is more of a luxury than a necessity. Okay, so I've determined that it doesn't matter how big the swim bait is, you are probably not casting anywhere close to 50 yards on a cast. At least I can't. So let me try to do a really long cast and show you guys how much line is left on this spool. All right, so that's probably the longest cast yet. And this is how much line is left on this Corrado. So you could probably technically get away with a 200 size spool, maybe like a Tranx 200. And like I said, any swim bait guys who are watching, let me know if you use any line that's heavier than 20 pounds. Now I don't know about the power of the 200 pulling this lure through the water, but line capacity on the 200 would definitely be plenty. All right, here we go. Personally, I would not go over two 
and a quarter ounces for this rod. It feels overpowered to me. It definitely wouldn't go to four ounces like it says, but that's pretty much like any rod. Right in the middle is gonna be the sweet spot. But the combo itself is very comfortable to fish. It's not unwieldy. It's not ridiculously heavy. And yeah. All right, guys, there we go. The Corrado 300K swim bait, initial casting and fishing impressions. And so far, I like it. Okay, guys, so I'm back from the water and let's finish off this video with some of my thoughts and observations after fishing and casting my first ever swim bait setup throwing heavier lures now the first thing i want to bring up is that in the beginning of the video you saw that uh, the line lay on the crotto was pretty awful and that was due to the fact that i couldn't fasten the yozuri spool of line onto something and uh, that's what caused the problem but as you can see it sorted itself out after making several casts so that's good now the second thing I observed was that when you go up to those heavier lures, I'm talking around two ounces and up, you kind of have to modify your cast stroke. And probably the best thing to do, and I think I've actually seen some swim bait guys do this, is that on your backswing, just pause for like a second or two and let the, the inertia and momentum of that heavy lure come to a complete stop. And then do your front swing unless you have just a super strong thumb to keep this spool from moving because when I first casted that two ounce swim bait on the backstroke this spool almost got out of hand <laughs> almost caused a blow up but luckily I was able to catch that so yeah you definitely have to adjust your casting style when you are throwing these heavier lures and I can't imagine these guys that are throwing you know those super heavy swim baits just how much thumb pressure you have to put on this spool to keep it from moving on the front stroke before you release it finally. Now another thing I noticed was that these swim baits don't really cast that far. Now granted I wasn't casting you know with full power uh, as I said in the video I felt that the eye rod was getting overpowered by those you know two ounce swim baits and I was scared if I put you know a full swing into it that the rod was gonna break but even if I was to put a full swing I don't think I would have gained that much distance maybe like five yards tops depending on how the lure was flying through the air but yeah I don't really see any guys doing some super long swim bait casts like I'm talking 50 yards or so and that's just because these lures you know have so much surface area that resist the wind and plus you know most of them are jointed and they'll helicopter through the air but yeah that was kind of disappointing but as you can see that even on some of my longest casts there was plenty of line left on the spool and keep in mind this is 20 pound copolymer so in the future maybe shimano can come out with like a 200 or 250 size spool with the bigger beefier internals now another observation i made was that I didn't see any kind of real performance or casting increase going from five breaks to four and I think the overruns I had at the beginning of the video were due to the fact that the line was probably needing to settle on the spool and once it did settle I didn't really have any kind of overrun problems now these breaks are very primitive but they are effective and I really don't see a lot of swim bait guys making you know these fine adjustments from cast to cast now I could be wrong but 
if you do do that, you know, an external brake adjustment would be great. Just like the one found on the Tattoo Le 300, plus a lot of the Corrado's competitors have external brake adjustments. But it seems to be pretty much set and forget for the most part. Alright, so let's talk about my plans for swim baiting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it about two years and if I'm moderately successful I will probably upgrade to higher end gear. You know, maybe a heavier rated swim bait rod from you know a higher end company and maybe look into a more expensive reel. Possibly an Antares DCMD if they're still out by the time I'm making my decision. Now let's define what I consider successful. Now if I am consistently able to catch the target species then I will consider that a win and I'm gonna give myself I guess a 20% success rate. So if I go out 10 times I'd like to catch something at least two times on this swim bait setup. And then if I break my personal best largemouth which is 5.2 pounds on this setup then I'm definitely going to keep on throwing swim baits. So now on to the contest. Now I've decided that I am going to give away this model right here which is the HG and I'm going to keep the 4.7 power gear ratio and the reason being is that I think the 4.7 gear ratio would work better for me where I'm going to be fishing and the fact that Pissifun actually sent me this right here which is going to be in a future video so that contest is coming up so be on the lookout for that and I am going to post a I guess uh, a notification post on my channel letting everyone know when the contest is going to be so if you're you know somewhere in a different time zone maybe on the other side of the world everyone will know when the contest video is coming out and have an equal chance of winning I just got to figure out what I'm gonna make you guys do to win this reel alright guys there we go my first time ever throwing dedicated swim baits on a dedicated swim bait setup and I had a lot of fun it was very very mesmerizing watching those swim baits snake through the water like that and if there was any fish around there's no way they could have resisted that all right guys thanks a lot